Major funding for A Taste of Louisiana with John Fultz and Company is made possible in part by Zatarain's authentic New Orleans style dinner mixes. Zatarain's, a good way to jazz up dinner and a real New Orleans original since 1889. Louisiana, she's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and believe different. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. I'm sure God knew that men needed the sound of waves, breezes off the water, and crickets chirping in the night to set their minds at ease. Certainly he knew what small cabins with wide front porches and rocking chairs do for the soul. Well, y'all, I've discovered such a place, and men have laid their heads here from as far away as Cairo, Egypt, to as near as just a mile away. Yes, this is tranquility at its best, the peace and quiet that God intended. I'm Jeff John Foles. Welcome to beautiful Toledo Bend Lake in Miami, Louisiana, and to Juju's, a bed and breakfast for those seeking refuge from a maddening world. Y'all, my good friend and pro football player Bobby Hebert, originally from Louisiana, has a home on this beautiful lake. Today, he's taking me fishing, if you can imagine that. I hear he has a secret spot somewhere out here. Judy Cathy constantly had to entertain friends, so in 1992, she opened up a quaint little cabin directly on Toledo Bend Lake. The cabin has its own boat port and deck, so guests may enjoy lake sports of all kinds up close, y'all, from fishing to skiing. What a gorgeous place this is. The inviting walkways and wide front porch allow visitors ease at surveying the grounds or just setting up that barbecue grill, all while absorbing the sunshine and scents of fresh pine forest here in North Louisiana. Judy's tasteful decorating talents are further enhanced with casual furnishings, and here you're certain to find displays of her favorite pastime. Well, of course it's fishing. Guests who are lucky enough to reserve this cabin at any time of year will find two bedrooms, one with multiple sleeping accommodations for children, and even a fully equipped kitchen for sauteing the day's catch. Y'all, imagine your alarm clock being the sound of a distant boat motor or birds chirping right outside your window. Juju's, what a peaceful way to spend the night away from home on gorgeous Toledo Bend Lake. Y'all, I love the Toledo Bend area, not only because that lake has some of the finest fishing in all of Louisiana, and of course, skiing and all types of water sports, but also because it's the Spanish area of Louisiana, a heavy Spanish influence 
all around that area. Toledo, of course, Toledo, Spain. And naturally, the Spanish came up from Mexico all the way up to that corner of northwest Louisiana. And uh, when I think of tamales, I think of that area, Zuali. There's even a tamale festival about 10 miles down the road from Toledo Bend. So the foods of that area, even though naturally seafood, bias especially, a lot of bias cooked with the Spanish spices and the Spanish influence of Louisiana. So today I have to cook dishes that have a little bit of that Spanish twist to them. So take a look at my little cutting board here. What do you see when you look at this combination of, uh, of ingredients? Flour tortillas, uh, cheese, a little bit combination of Monterey Jack salsas, jalapeno peppers, of course you think about Spanish cuisine. And in this particular case, Cantino Toledo breakfast, y'all, is what I'm going to cook for you today. What a way to wake up on Toledo Bend. You want to start this dish by browning some really nice breakfast sausage. Just go to the store, pick up some breakfast sausage, just a, a pack of it, a pound or so, and go ahead and brown it nicely and you want to render most of the fat. Now I've taken all but about two and a half or so tablespoons of uh, fat out of here. Now what I want to do is to add my seasonings. Uh, naturally this is a breakfast dish all stuffed into that flour tortilla so you want to have some pretty Spanish flavors. Take a look at that. Isn't that nice? Onions, the bell peppers and all peppers, especially the hot peppers, came up across the Rio Grande into uh, North America. So we start uh, up into what present day United States, I should say, but all hot peppers originated down in that area. So whenever you think of spicy peppers like jalapenos, Tabascos, they came from down in the Mexican part of, uh, the, of the country. So I'm going to add a touch of jalapenos, nice, hot, spicy jalapenos to this. And then, y'all, a little bit Jack cheese. I have to put Jack. Monterey Jack? Where did Monterey come from? Again, the Spanish influence. So I'm going to stir all of this around. Look how pretty that filling is. Y'all get back in this skillet right here for a minute. Take a look at all those gorgeous colors. Now the Jack. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit in here because I want to melt it around just for a second. I'm going to put a little bit in there. I'm going to put a little bit more on the eggs when I come back here, y'all. So let's come on over to the cutting board because I want to whisk in my omelet. This is a, uh, should I call this a Western omelet? I don't really know. I'm going to call this a Spanish omelet. Cantino Toledo omelet. So I'm going to whip six eggs and whenever I make an omelet, I like to lighten it with a little bit cream or milk. A lot of people will add cream or milk uh, to an omelet, but don't put too much. It'll keep the eggs uh, oh, kind of runny, kind of uh, kind of gooey. So you want to just put enough to lighten and fluffy those eggs. And then into this, I'm going to add some of my favorite seasonings. First of all, some good Creole seasoning into it. Just kind of spice that up a little bit. A little salt, pepper. You can put some cumin. You can put some chili powder in here. Y'all, if you want to, just put a little bit of those Spanish uh, spices into it. Mix them up in there real good. Now into the skillet of sausage and all of those great flavors. Just take a look at that. And of course, I'm just making a scrambled egg here, so I want to blend that around nicely to mix all of those cheeses and sausage and all of those great things together and just kind of fluff it around for a second. and. I think you have the idea here. You see how it all cooks together nicely and the eggs pick up all of that? Doesn't that look great? What a wonderful omelet. You could just flip this right out of the pan. And I'll let this simmer for just a second here. I like to keep it a little bit light. I don't want to dry it out too much. And y'all, how do I put it all together? Well, first of all, when you have flour tortillas, and you can buy the flour or the corn tortillas in the store already, you know, about a dozen to the pack. I guess you can make them yourself, but this is the easy way to do it. And put about five or six of them in damp paper towels and zap them in the microwave for just a couple of minutes and they become so nice and moist and steamy and just keep them hot inside of one of those tortilla keepers that you can just kind of keep the shells nice and steamy just as they do in the uh, Mexican restaurants. And then you would take this and come back over to the skillet once your omelet, look how that omelet or scramble egg I should say is uh, really nice and fluffy here. You would go ahead and fill this up with it and roll it. You know what I'm talking about. Let me show you how uh, some are already done here. Take a look at my beautiful little plate of uh, 
of uh, filled egg uh, shells, and then you can put some guacamole on it. Of course, you know, just go crazy with this stuff. Put all of your favorite uh, flavors. You can put salsas right on top of that. I'm going to just decorate a couple of them uh, here for you. And uh, just kind of put them around here, and then sour cream. And, and if you want to put them back in an oven right before you do this, you can. But uh, believe me, if you have them nice and steaming, you come right out of the omelet pan. Let everybody kind of play with them themselves. Put as much of the flavorings in. But remember, put some of those uh, 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 spices, those Spanish spices, the cumins and the chili powders. It's just going to give this omelet a very, very unique flavor. Absolutely wonderful dish, y'all. Great for breakfast in the morning. Or I tell you what, what a brunch item, huh? If you're doing a Spanish brunch, beautiful Cantino Toledo breakfast. Now the next uh, dish I want to show you that came also out of that Spanish area, Louisiana, is a pork loin, y'all. This is a real, I want you to take a look at the cut, uh, cutting board. This is going to be a roasted loin of pork. In Louisiana, we call it cochon de lait, the Spanish la chung asado. I think I said that right, la chung asado. Is that right? Well, I'm not too good at my Spanish. Let's say cochon de lait, y'all. This is the pork loin, and of course, pork has really a... Uh, uh, received a lot of popularity because the, uh, the pork producers say back in 1995, and I'm going to season this with a little salt and pepper, y'all, but in 1995, a 125 uh, uh, pound pig produced about 40 pounds of lard, and today that same size pig produced about 10, so they call it a light meat, and more and more people are beginning to use uh, pork. So I want to put a little bit salt, pepper, a little bit Creole seasoning on top of my pork loin, and I'm just going to pan saute this nicely. I'm going to also put into it some herbs, some basil, some thyme, some sage, rosemary, just kind of cut some little holes all through the loin here and stuff it with these beautiful herbs and spices. The more y'all, the merrier. And let, again, let your imagination go crazy here. So once all of that's in, put, put some garlic in there too. Can you imagine Spanish pork loin or Louisiana pork loin for that uh, matter without some really nice garlic into it? So I'm gonna put this in and season both sides really well. And you would let this uh, kind of sit and pick up the flavors <clears throat> for a couple of uh, hours at least. I like my meat to sit at room temperature once I season it for a couple of hours and then I'm going to go into the saute pan, y'all. I have a real pretty black iron saute pan here and I'm going to put a little bit olive oil in it. Spanish? Yeah, of course, but listen, nobody does it. Well, I guess the uh, Greeks and the French, but Spanish olive oil is just fantastic. Now I'm going to brown my pork loin and I'm going to put it into the pan with all of the garlic and everything right down into the oil to sear the pork. I want to caramelize that nice pork flavor uh, right onto the outside of the pork. And that's a technique I think that's very important. Whenever you sear meat, you want to caramelize the sugar. And pork has a lot of great caramelization happening here. And watch when I turn this over, y'all. When I turn it over, you can see how quickly that pork started to brown right across the center and the pepper, the salt, the Creole seasoning is really cooking nicely into this pork dish. And one of the things about pork, in all developing countries, pork was one of the main items on the menu. Why? Because pigs could kind of take care of themselves. They could kind of run around the neighborhood and eat whatever scraps were left over. They could go forage for themselves. So naturally, the fat could be used, the hide could be used, uh, and all of the different cuts of meat could be used in a variety of fashion. So needless to say, pork would have found its way onto all of the menus, especially the early Spanish menus of Toledo Bend. So now that my uh, loin is starting to brown and sear nicely, now y'all, I'm gonna season it, and again, a little bit celery, a little bit onions, a little bit bell pepper. Remember all those garlic and herbs are in here, so you want to kind of just continue to put a little bit more in, and I'm a little, little bit of garlic here. You don't think I'm going to just stop with the little garlic that's in it. Bell pepper, naturally, more of that pretty colored bell pepper, just all over that. And then, y'all, I'm going to add some nice, rich beef stock right to it, just enough to come up about half way the distance of the pork loin, and then I can add some apples. I can put some red and green apples. I like apples in any pork dish, applesauce in pork, of course. 
a little apples right now. Take a look at how gorgeous that is. That's, all, that's almost like a Christmas dish, right? Let this simmer for a little while. Cover it tightly, y'all, and then go into about a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Just kind of cook it to about 140 degrees. And look at what it looks like when it's all said and done. And I took the drippings of the pan. Huh, you better believe it. And I made a nice sauce with it, y'all. There's the loin of pork with my nice natural drippings. Well, y'all, while I was on Toledo Bend, I was fortunate enough to meet up with a buddy of mine, Bobby Abair, the great quarterback from the Saints and, of course, the Atlanta Falcons. And he and I went out onto that lake because somebody told me he had a private little fishing hole, and he was able to take me out onto the lake and uh, fish a little bit. And, of course, we talked football and we talked Toledo Bend. So, hey, y'all come on out in the boat with us. All right, there, Bob. Pick him up. All right. Huh? Man, it's time we get one, huh? Huh? <laughs> huh? Come in that same little. Huh? All right, there you go. Kick him up. That's one for the frying pan. All right. Pick that. Pick him up and spin him on around. All right, there you go. <laughs> I'll take that one. I'll take that little one. See if I can get in there and catch me one. So what do you want me to do with the fish now? Let him go. Let's hold him up for a minute. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now we can let him go easily. Bye-bye. Keep going. Well, Bobby, that was a pretty good day of fishing. What, uh, what first brought you uh, here to uh, Toledo Bend? Well, I just think it was a combination of different things, you know, going to school in Natchitoches at uh, Northwestern State University. Uh, you know, I lived here basically from 78 until 85. Um, my wife's from a little town about 13 miles where I have uh, the lake house called in Negrete, Louisiana. And, you know, I never forget when I met her in college, she told me she was from Negrete. I thought she had said Greece. I thought she was one of these exotic, you know, tennis players uh, from Greece. And um, when I come to find out when I went to Negrete, I said, well, Cutoff's like a city compared to the Greek, where I grew up, you know, in Cutoff, Louisiana. But I can remember the post office being in a trail and everything. And so these are really good people, just like I grew up with in South Louisiana. And uh, it's just grown on me. And I just love coming up here to get away from the city, you know, living in Atlanta now. Right. And it's just a great environment. Well, you know, when I think of Toledo Bend, I kind of think back to the days when my brothers used to come fishing. They'd have to carry a trailer behind them or a tent or cooking equipment. But, boy, it's a lot more than just a fishing lake today. Yeah, I think just the past um, 10 years, it's really, you know, changed a lot. Uh, you know, with the clearing of the boat lanes, uh, you know, they don't have as many stumps and trees. And now in this area, in the Lenang Creek area, they've actually use it for sailing. Um, you know, it's a great place to water ski. You know, just a lot of different activities where it's not just, you know, to go bass fishing and, uh, right. or any type of fishing. Well, somebody was telling me last night that they were actually building an 18-hole golf course up here and a convention center. Yeah, it's really um, progressed as the last few years. They have um, out at Twin Island, um, Cypress Bend Golf Course is really nice. I always, you know, thought they should have uh, utilized um, the lake and put a golf course. You know, they had Toro Hills and then they build Cypress Bend and actually use the water as part of the course and it's really beautiful and it's you know, getting better and very popular. Now you have the facilities where people not only fishing, but coming to play golf or, um, you know, conventions, they have the facilities where they'll be able to uh, sleep over and have the accommodations that they didn't have in the past. Well, and I'm sure that's why we're seeing the growth of the bed and breakfast community out here as well. There's a need, uh, there's a niche out here for uh, bed and breakfasts and they're cropping up everywhere. Yeah, people are looking, you know, to get away. And life's so hectic now in the city, they want to come out in the country and just relax and get away. and. You know, I've been to a number of lakes around the country, and this is one of the least crowded lakes, and, you know, I'm just glad I was able to um, find it and um, just be a part of it. Uh, now, 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 what's the best fishing in here? Well, you get a, you know, combination of different things, but it's been famous, you know, with um, largemouth bass, and you also catch stripers, and, you know, just as a kid, you'll catch perch, um, crappie, and, um, 
You know, there's just, I mean, to me, crappie, you can't crappie, get any crappie, better. Crappie, what's that? Well, you know, that's like down south, but we call a sakale. Oh, I mean, you know that, that's a fancy John? name for sakale. Yeah, a fancy name for sakale. <laughs> and then you look at the perch, we call that a patasa. So you get all different words that um, unless you were raised in South Louisiana, people look at you like, what, what, what are you talking about? So you have to explain so, so it. So you're well. reintroducing a language here on the lake. Right, exactly, exactly. The Cajuns are moving up north. Because I always thought, you know, North Louisiana, around Shreveport and all was more like Texas. <laughs> then you have Beaumont, Texas that really should have been part of Louisiana. But what, um, what, what about the neighbors? What about the neighborhood? Of course, you're a celebrity being in pro ball and all of that. But I, I mean, are these people really friendly like South Louisiana? Oh, they're just like South Louisiana. You know, um, you might have the church activities on Sunday. Then all the families and cousins get together for um, a meal where you have 20, 25 people eating, the grandmothers cooking. And, um, and it's just like home. That's why. I think of Louisiana, not only South Louisiana, but the entire state as uh, being a part of my life. You know, going to school up here and um, it growing upon you and, and really just um, having a relationship not only with my immediate family, but also with my wife's family. Well, and there's such diversity in the state, too. I mean, you grow up in South Louisiana, you think of South, you grow up in North and North, but, but when people start to travel around and experience the whole state, it's a fantastic place. You could have. Uh, built a home on any lake anywhere in the world, from Lake Placid to Lake Desalment. <laughs> Why did you choose to lead a band? Well, I, I just think, this, like I said previously, just a combination of different things. Just um, the access to, um, to get here is not that bad from Shreveport. You know, flying to Shreveport is 70 miles south of here where I have my home. And just um, being able to get away and not feel like you're overcrowded. I mean, right. the water is warm. You go to some lakes in the country, the water is too cold to swim. It's like taking a nice bath in the summer. and <laughs> And my wife loves to water ski. Uh, she wake me up early in the morning and said, come on, come pull me. That's my exercise for the day. I want to go water skiing. So we just enjoy the lake, and, and the kids really love it. And, you know, we, we closed our family, and that's, you know, something that when I left and started playing pro ball, and you always wanted to come back to Toledo Bend and, um, and use this great resource. I mean, it, it was here, and it's just growing bigger and bigger every year. Well, well, you know, we had a pretty good day of fishing today, huh? I mean, caught a couple of nice fish. Yeah, we, we caught a couple of nice fish, John, but, um, but you know, I have some friends coming, o coming over tonight, and uh, I'm going to have to feed them. I don't know, you know, about you, but uh, I have this nice one right here that, uh, that I'm yeah, going to fix up, and, um, and I think it'll feed a few people, but I don't know about you. You might go hungry. <laughs> so that's, that's all we got. Bobby, you've been gone from South Louisiana too long because, you know, you'll never catch a Cajun off guard, you know? I always keep about a dozen <laughs> good fish right close to my heart, no matter whether, whether I'm in the boat or in the kitchen. Oh, you never go hungry now. <laughs> I got my fish. Y'all, you think for a minute a Cajun chef on Toledo Bend would take a chance that we wouldn't catch any fish? I always have my fish in my back pocket. And I want you to know that that little, what was that, one and a half pound uh, uh, bass, that's not indicative of the normal fishing on Toledo Bend, y'all. I think uh, Bobby didn't share his favorite fishing hole with me that day. But a couple of other great dishes that I found while I was on Toledo Bend. Let's take a look at my first one here. This is a pepper marinated flank steak, or it's from the London broil cut, y'all, and the, the steak has been uh, uh, marinated for about four or five hours at room temperature with balsamic vinegar, cane syrup, cloves, herbs of every kind, a little brown sugar, and then it sat, as I said, for about four hours at uh, room temperature to just kind of pick up that natural marinade, and then I went on to a hot barbecue pit, again, flavored with uh, pecan wood. I love pecan wood, but you can put hickory or oak or whatever very quickly, y'all. When you cook London broil, after it picks up the flavors in the marinade, hit that flank steak on the hottest side of the coals for about five to six minutes on each side for medium rare. Now, take a look at this next little gorgeous dish I have here. This is a strawberry mousse. And the mousse, well, of course, you can see the strawberries on the bottom. Isn't that clever? And that's what makes me a great chef, you know, <laughs> these little <laughs> strawberries down here. And this is about 10 ounces of a uh, Frozen strawberries, very simple to make, and you just kind of chop them around with a half a pint of sour cream and about a half a cup of sugar, a tablespoon of vanilla, and you whip all of that together on high speed. You put it in the glasses, and then you go right into the freezer for a couple of hours just to kind of let all of those flavors come together. What a nice light finish, y'all, to any, any meal, especially a nice uh, London broil or a nice baked fish dish on Toledo Bend. It's one of the most gorgeous lakes in Louisiana. And of course, Juju's, that magnificent little cabin sits there overlooking the water 
What a place to wake up in the morning. So y'all, that's all of the foods from that part of North Louisiana. And I want to thank y'all for stopping by as we continue to visit the bed and breakfasts of the Bayou State and naturally cook up more great taste of Louisiana. Now, should I get the mousse or should I do a burrito? I think I'm going to go for the mousse, y'all. Uh, no, no, yeah, the mousse. Oh, what the heck? Mmm. To learn more about A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Folsom Company, visit PBS online at the internet address on your screen. Hot beignets and warm boudoirs by Chef John Foltz is available for $29.95. This companion book to the series features over 150 recipes. To order, call 1-800-973-7246 or write to the address on your screen. Major funding for A Taste of Louisiana with John Foltz and Company is made possible in part by Zatarain's authentic New Orleans style dinner mixes. Zatarain's, a good way to jazz up dinner and a real New Orleans original since 1889. Louisiana, she's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. <laughs>